the Tonto group formed at the very start of the Paleozoic era, the time of ancient life. So that's really when the fossil record began. Now, as time went on and we moved into the Silurian and Ordovician periods, that passive sinking environment probably continued here at Grand Canyon. But it's hard to say because this is where we run into another unconformity. Sediments that were likely laid down were eventually eroded away and released from the geologic record. So really the next major layer of the Grand Canyon doesn't even show up in the Devonian. We only have small deposits from that. The next truly massive layer shows up in the Mississippian or lower Carboniferous time period starting around 340 million years ago. That's when another oceanic transgression covered North America. But this ocean went much further to the east, reaching as far as Kansas and Kentucky. So way out here in the Grand Canyon region, we were far offshore in an environment that was perfect for those shale-bearing creatures, producing calcium carbonate, leading to lime mud, and eventually limestone. So here at the Grand Canyon, we have a very thick layer of almost pure limestone known as the Redwall Limestone. And when I'm giving tours, this is actually one of the easiest layers to identify. All you gotta do is look right into the middle of the Grand Canyon, find the biggest red cliff that you can, and that is the Redwall Limestone. Now that limestone is actually rich in shallow marine fossils. So it's about 450 feet thick today, but the ocean that it formed in was probably no more than 300 feet deep. So that's kind of a, a paradox. How did that thick of limestone form in such a shallow ocean? Well, the key was offshore subsidence. The land was slowly sinking here. But just as fast as the land was sinking, that lime mud and limestone was building up. So over time, that limestone was getting thicker and thicker and thicker as the land sank, but the ocean above it remained relatively the same depth. Now that nice pure limestone is actually typically gray in color, but here we call it the Redwall Limestone. Well, that name is actually kind of a misnomer. The rocks themselves are actually not red. It is that nice gray of your typical limestone. But the rocks above it, they are rich in iron oxide. And as rain and precipitation brings that iron oxide out of those upper rocks, it bleeds down and kind of stains the face of the Redwall Limestone. So when you're looking right in the middle of the Grand Canyon, you find this 400 foot thick piece of limestone, that's the Redwall. And for hikers going down and back up, that's 450 feet of limestone that you gotta hike through. Eventually that Redwall Ocean regressed back to the west. And for about 10 million years, that Redwall limestone lay exposed here in the Grand Canyon region. But by about 320 million years ago, tectonics were changing once again. And all of the continents were colliding together, starting to form the massive supercontinent Pangaea. But this area was still right on the coast. However, to the north and east of us, that tectonic activity led to an uplift of a mountain range geologists called the Ancestral Rockies. And as those Rockies rose to the north and east of us, right here some basins would start to form. Up until this point in time, most of the sediment here had been deposited by oceans. But that Ancestral Rockies started sending grains of sand and gravel downhill filling up these basins. And this was kind of a wind-blown desert environment. And if you look at the red stair steps just above the red wall limestone, those are the cliffs of sandstone deposited in that desert climate. Now on the far other end of Pangaea, the continent was crossing the South Pole. And in that cold area, periods of glacial expansion and recession were very common during this area. And as those glaciers shrank, more fresh water entered into the ocean, sea levels rose, and periodically this area would be covered in oceans. So for a few million years, those ocean transgressions would come in and cover this kind of wind-blown desert environment. So in what's known as the Supai group, you get a mix of sandstones, shales, mudstones, and even a few limestones. And that is the kind of red staircase that you see right in the middle of the Grand Canyon that existed during the Pennsylvanian time period around 320 million years ago.